Welcome to the Cybersecurity Competition Federation Show. I'm Dan Manson. I teach computer information systems at Cal Poly Pomona and serve as principal investigator for our National Science Foundation grant to help form an umbrella organization over cybersecurity competitions. The Cybersecurity Competition Federation can support the development of skill at a large scale by bringing cybersecurity competitions under an umbrella organization, which will help players of all ages and skill levels identify a point of entry into a continuum of cybersecurity competition experiences. With a focus on communication and promotion, the CCF maintains the autonomy of competition creators, supports their business models, and does not interfere with their sponsorship or funding sources. This week, we will begin our review of the teams in the National Collegiate Cyber Defense Competition. First, we will profile Jim Christie. As Director of the Department of Defense Digital Crime Center from 2006 to 2013, Jim ran the International DC3 Digital Forensic Challenge. Today, Jim runs the Digital Crime Scene Challenge at Cyber Patriot, but with support from the Department of Homeland Security, is ramping up a new digital forensics competition. I talked with Jim recently at the Cyber Patriot National Finals. Jim, digital forensics competition are nothing new to you. You used to be involved with DC3. What was DC3? DC3 is the uh, Department of Defense Cyber Crime Center uh, up in uh, Lithgow, Maryland. And it has the world's largest digital forensics lab. They have a training academy. Uh, and a cyber crime institute does research development of uh, computer and digital forensics tools. And they had a competition that, that you were very involved with where they, we had different levels, level 100 and 200 and 300? Yes, what I did is I created the uh, uh, digital forensics challenge and uh, what we would have is about uh, uh, progressive level uh, uh, exercises that you would virtually download, solve, and then upload your solutions. And uh, we ran these competitions for eight years with DC3, and due to budget constraints, they stopped. So what we've done is we've created a nonprofit organization to resurrect uh, and reincarnate that uh, uh, challenge. Now, those that I talked to that participated in the DC3 Digital Challenge felt it was one of the most fun and exciting competitions out there. It wasn't a 15-minute competition. It was something that they would spend weeks and even months working on. To, to solve that challenge. What is your goal now going forward with digital forensics competitions? Well, when I was with DOD, what we focused on uh, 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 colleges and universities and companies. Uh, what we want to do now is, is uh, make it a little easier in the beginning and, and start targeting the middle schoolers and high schoolers to get them at least interested in the discipline and maybe to seek out higher education uh, in digital forensics. Now the exposure that the, the general audience has to digital forensics, maybe CSI or NCIS, but in the real world, it, it's much more than that. What is it that students should know about the field of digital forensics? Well, it's it's a very it's a high demand and low supply uh, area. Uh, there are 18,000 law enforcement agencies in the United States alone and there aren't 18,000 computer crime investigators and digital forensics. So that means each agency doesn't even have one. And so in today's environment, there aren't very many crimes that don't have some kind of digital nexus. And so whether it's a wristwatch, your GPS, your laptop, uh, uh, your alarm system on your house, or business records, it's all digitized today and may be uh, relevant to an investigation. So, so the goal of solving a crime is to find the evidence and find the trail. Increasingly what you're saying, that evidence is digital and it's a digital trail. Correct. Yeah, it's basically to answer the traditional who, what, where, when, why, and how questions. And that ne ne doesn't necessarily have to apply just to law enforcement. So if you're an owner of a smart uh, a company and you have an insider problem, maybe somebody's defrauding you or doing something uh, they're not supposed to, you run an internal investigation. You, you need digital forensics to be able to do that. And then, and then there's the uh, e-discovery. So now in civil litigation, uh, lawyers, law firms need digital forensic examiners to be able to go through uh, the e-discovery and all the computer media. DHS, I believe, is a supporter of 
the, the new digital forensics competition that you're working on and this is something that you're looking for other supporters, other sponsors for? Absolutely. We, we need uh, additional sponsors right now. DHS has their budget issues and so uh, the money is slow coming out of the government so we're looking for as many possible sponsors that and, we can get. And the companies that need these digital forensics professionals, some of these would make great sponsors for your competition. Absolutely. Whether, whether you're a retailer uh, you run a small uh, uh, business, or whether you're academia, you know, everybody has, has to run internal investigations. You know, everybody, crime is everywhere. You know, and there's, there's always, otherwise you wouldn't have uh, cybersecurity. So when cybersecurity fails, you need digital forensics to come in and find out the who, what, where, when, and why, how. We are continuing our segment this week called Inside the Game. With me is Dr. Jason Pittman. Jason, welcome back. Hey, everybody. Jason, the field has been set for this year's national CCDC. Let's take a look at the teams. First, from the Rocky Mountain Regional, we have Southern Utah University playing for the first time this year and going to nationals. I was there, and they look good. It's uh, our first underdog story, and I think they have some good momentum, and they have some good energy going into this competition. I definitely agree. North Central Regional, University of Nebraska at Kearney. This team is also new, and they made the news already because the Department of Defense called them up after they won the regionals and made them a team offer. The second team offer in CCDC history, first one being back in 2009, Cal Poly Pomona and Boeing Corporation, but having this offer going into the Nationals, could that affect them? I think it does. Uh, I think it's going to distract them. It's a great thing, don't get me wrong, but it's a distraction from success. The at-large regional, University of Alaska at Fairbanks. This is a team that's been to Nationals. They have experience. What do you think? I think all they have to do is play cyber games and chase polar bears, so I'm glad to see them again. The Southwest Regional, University of Texas at San Antonio. UTSA hadn't been to the Nationals since about 2006. Uh, this is a team that has a lot of desire to be back, a lot of hunger, and they made it. Yeah, I, I think they remember what it was like to be successful at the national level, and they want to be successful again. Northeast Regional, Rochester Institute of Technology. RIT is the team that I picked to go all the way. They're in the Nationals. I think I'm still going to pick them. Uh, I think it's like a game of rock, paper, scissors. If you go rock and lose, you still got to go rock the second time. Pacific Rim Regional, ITT Tech Boise. This team finished eighth last year, eighth the year before. This year, they won the regional. They're going to nationals, the first ITT team in the nationals. They are a great story. They're an excellent story. They're the underdog. They have some great energy. They really believe in themselves. And I got a secret tip from my Uncle Jimmy. The Western Regional. University of California, Berkeley, third year. They've gotten better every year. They finished second the first year in the regional, won the regional last year, finished middle of the pack in nationals. They're back in nationals this year. I think they're going to be even better. Uh, I think they're going to do well, but the chances of them winning, I think it's like a bad Timothy Leary trip. Okay. Mid-Atlantic Regional, University of Maryland, Baltimore County. The University of Maryland has experience in this competition. This is a team that you know a little bit about. I think they're going to do well. I, I, they consistently do well. I think that's one of the, the pivotal hallmarks of UMBC. Midwest Regional, DePaul University. This is a team that's also had experience in the Nationals. This is a team that does well. I think they're going to be good, but I don't see them on the stand. They have a chance, just like anybody else. Uh, they're consistent. They could do it. I don't know if I see them in the top three. And finally, the defending champion, UCF, is back. They won the Southeast Regional. Uh, it's hard to root against US, UCF. They really are strong. They know how to win. And now it's up to us to pick the top three. I'm going to go first. Please. I'm going to stick with RIT. This is a team I picked earlier. I still think they're going to make it to the top of the stand. Second place, I think UCF is going to be there. And third place, you know, I'm going to go against you. I'm going to go with a team from the Western Regional. I'm going to go with UC Berkeley finishing third. Your turn. Dan, I don't know. Uncle Jimmy says we should think about Boise. I think they have the energy. They're young. They're very hungry. And they see the underdog getting the job offer. Why didn't they? 
I think they're going to take first. That would be cool. It would be excellent. Second. Second. I think it's going to be RIT. Second and first is going to be hotly contested, but RIT is a strong, strong, strong contender. And third. You know, I think I'm going to go with Berkeley. I think I'm going to go with Berkeley for third. Very good. Thank you, Jason. Thanks, Dan. We will be back next week with on-site coverage and review from the National Collegiate Cyber Defense Competition. You can follow the National CCDC live through Twitter at hashtag NCCDC. If you have a competition you would like us to cover in a future show, please contact us at cyberfed.org. I'm Dan Manson, see you next week.